Hello everyone. So now let us talk about one more problem from lead code. The problem name is pizza with three and slices. Okay. It's a hard problem. So stay focused. The problem statement goes like this, that there are a pizza with three and slices of varying sizes. Okay. Now you and your friends are taking the slices from the pizza as following. So you will pick any pizza slice. Your friend Alice will pick the next slice to the anti-clockwise direction of your pick. Bob will pick the clockwise of your pick and this will keep on repeating. So it means that if you pick a slice, the clock one, like from your slice, the clock one uh, slice will be taken by Bob and the anti-clockwise like slice will be taken by Alice. And so it means that in every chance, three pizza slices are taken out. Okay. And uh, if you do like this, then that is why it is in three and slices so that uh, it is a multiple of three. Uh, fine. Now uh, it will keep on going. So what is the objective? The objective is to return the maximum possible sum of slices that you can pick. Okay. So you want to maximize the, the total sum of the maximum size of pizza you will eat. So that is why you want to maximize your total sum. How you can do that. Now you can pause this video, try to think over that, but let us first move on to the example parts, how it is doing. So what you can see in this example is that if you choose this four one, then obviously the anti-clockwise, this three piece will be taken by Alice and the clockwise of this five piece will be taken by Bob. Then you will like, if then the pizza of this three pieces are deleted out. So only these three pizza slices are left like this. So you will be picking out this six. So clockwise will be Alice and like anti-clockwise will be uh, like anti-clockwise will be Alice and clockwise will be Bob. And that is how these are picked. So total will be six plus four. That is equal to 10. So 10 is the answer. Okay. So first thing which comes to my mind is okay. Uh, why not just brute force pick up the maximum ones and uh, just take the maximum one and whatever the left and right that will be taken by Bob. And then you again, whatever the pizza is left, take the maximum one. So when I think of some greedy approach and then let us, okay, let us uh, try to see that greedy approach on here on this example. Now what you can see is that in this whole uh, pizza, the maximum one is nine. Now if you choose this nine one, then obviously like the left and right one, obviously like the clockwise and anti-clockwise will be taken by uh, Alice and Bob. Okay. So the pizza slice will be left with this six one one. And obviously you will choose the next one that is like the next maximum that is six. If you choose the next maximum that is six. So the total value you will be getting out is six plus nine. That is equal to 15, but the answer is 16. Okay. So it means that taking up greedily, every uh, pizza slice that is left to you is not the correct approach. So whenever I see that the piece, like I'm using a greedy approach that is not feasible and the total constraint length is very small. Then the, like the first thing which strikes to my mind is dynamic programming that it use some sort of a dynamic programming. Okay. So now because it is some sort of dynamic programming, I come to the approach that, okay, I have for every slice, I have two options. Okay. The first option is to take that slice or not take that slice. If I take that slice, then the slice on the left and right, I will not take it because that will be picked by Alice and I will go to like, if I'm taking I slice, I will not be picking up I plus one. I will be going to I plus two slice to again, start iterating my uh, memorization or recursive calls. So that is the whole thing I will be doing out. But because it is in a circular format, I somehow remembered one more question that is the house robber two problem. So if you haven't checked that problem, you can check it out. That is using some sort of a similar approach to solve this problem out because in circular type of uh, problems in which you have to use dynamic programming, uh, either you can also do this in one go, but it is better to split that particular problem into two halves. Like because going through the first complete circle, what you can do is like you can divide it into two halves. I will tell you in the drawing board, but that will be more approachable and more easy to understand instead of taking it complete to be a complete circle. So what I'm talking about now is let's take the first example only to even make it more clear. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the area will be like this. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And it is some sort of a circular array. Okay, so which means that uh, there will be some, if I just divide it, like, like I'm completely dividing it by into one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, just don't think uh, of this as a like a particular area value. I'm just dividing it like randomly. So this is the pizza I have. Now what you can see here is that, let's say if I choose the pizza with the value that is the starting one, that is the first value. Like the first case can be, I will be choosing out the pizza with the first value. Now, if, if I'm choosing out the pizza with the first value, obviously I cannot choose the next pizza as well as the last pizza. Okay. So what you can do is that you can delete out because it, it is like a circular manner because the only way you will be facing out the circular position, like, because see, 
if I'm just taking it to be a non-circular pizza, it will be like this one, two, three, four. And it will not happen that I will like I have to jump over and for this pizza, for this slice, I want to take it or not take it. So I will be like going back direction. That direction means that if I'm taking about, let's say four, four number pizza, it will be three and five. So it will be just like, it will be inbound only. But when I'm talking about the first pizza only, it will happen that the second one will be inbound, but the first one will be outer bound because I'm like going in a circle. So it will be talking about this six one. So instead of talking about that, what you can do is that I will take two cases. The first case is like, for the first pizza only, I will like generally take two like cases instead of just deciding the algorithm to, to, to take two cases because for every piece I have two cases, either to take it, not take it. So uh, like uh, for everything, but for the first pizza slice, I will be like brute forcefully or like in the code only take two cases. Like I will take the first pizza slice or not take it. Okay. So what I'm doing here is that if I'm taking the first pizza slice, it means that I'm not taking the second one and the sixth one. So six one, which means the last one. So what you can do is that you can like you can uh, submissively or like ex like you just force the last pizza slice to be zero. If you push the last pizza slice to be zero, it means that you cannot take it because it is zero. Like like the value will be zero. Like even if you take it, like uh, you will not getting any benefit out of it. So it is zero. And the second one you will not taking out. So you can also make it zero or instead of like you can like skip it out or like call your function from this point. You will be taking the total sum one plus starting your call from this point and you have this area now to do the thing and you will not be like overflowing. And the, and the second case can be like if I don't take one, if I don't take one, then it actually means that I will be starting. Like if I don't take one, I will be starting from two only. Like my total pizza slicing taking will start from two. I will not be taking one. So one is canceled out. And, uh, and also as you can see that if I'm not taking one, then obviously I have option to take six also and I will just start from two. Okay, that's the two prop, like two cases out there. So, and what you can do is that don't think over the left side. Only think over the right side because it is because on the left side I'm just doing like I'm coming from the left side. If I'm iterating only using a for loop from the left side, so don't think over the left side because I'm coming from the left side. Just think over the right side because right side is the value you want to iterate over. So what I'm doing here is that for every block I have two options: either to take it or not take it. If I am taking it. Taking means that I'm taking this pizza slice, so it, which means that I cannot take this pizza slice as well as this pizza slice. So if not taking this pizza slice, I will directly go to this pizza slice and call this function from here again. If I'm taking not taking this pizza slice, I will be just leave, leaving it and going to this block. And like I will be taking this pizza slice and so on. That is the overall logic for this problem. Let us move down to the code part and make it more clear. So I will be make, like doing this DP call. So let us come down to this for calling function first. So this is the total n. This is the mem set. So I will be taking or drawing out a DP value. And uh, this is the DP state and I'm initialize everything with minus one. Now what I'm doing is that there are two cases like first case and second case. For the first case, what I'm doing here is that I am not taking like I am actually uh, what you can say that I'm calling from the first wall like and it is n uh, like n by three. So what you can, what I, your, what you are saying here is that I am like, like I'm just skipping the first value. Like I'm not taking the first piece. If I'm not taking the first piece, I'll start from the second piece. So I will be starting from the first index as you can see, like, uh, starting from the first index and like sending out this whole function call, uh, else again, when I will be like starting out from the next starting case again, what I'm doing is that I want to mem set that whole thing again to minus one so that I can reset it out. If I reset it out, then what I'm doing is that I'm taking the first piece. Now, if I'm taking the first piece, what I've told you that if I'm taking the first piece, I cannot take the next piece as well as the last piece. So for the last piece, I want to make it explicitly zero and I want to start because I want, I've taken the first piece. So I will be starting from the first index and like, because I'm taking the first piece actually. Okay. And then this is the calculate function. Now what I'm doing in this calculate function is that I will be sending out like, like this is the slice slices is just the pizza. But there are two parameters that I'm sending. The the i is that I, what pizza slice I am currently on. That is i, and this n will tell me how many pizza slices are left to be taken out because I want to somehow uh, like also keep track of how many pizzas are left to be taken by by b. So because it is n, so I will divide by n by three, which means that every person will be getting n by three pizza slices. So I like for me because I want to maximize it for myself. I want to take n by three pizza slices till now. So n by three pieces slices are left to be picked by my, by b, and I want to just maximize whatever the sum I will getting out from both of these cases. Now let us see how this recursive function works. So I will be calling out this i n and this pizza slices. What is the base condition now? The base condition is either I have taken all the pizzas that is for my part. So for my part, if my n becomes zero, which means that I have taken all the pizza slices, 
or if I've gone out of bound that my i has gone out of bound then I will return zero or else if the state I am on is already iterated then I will return that particular state value or else I will call this function and find out the two cases maximum value the first value is what you can see that i plus one which means that I have like not taking the current value like not taking the current pizza so I will be just calling the calculate function or like recursively calling the function from the next pizza value so i plus one so I'm not taking the pizza so n remains same okay n remains same and the slice is the same or else I've taken the current pizza if I'm taking the current pizza slice then I will be taking that current pizza slice value that is the value itself and uh, as you can see like n is subtracted by one and now because I cannot take the next pizza slice value because I've taken the current slice value I will be taking the i plus two pizza slice value so calling this i from i plus two and like this the calling function again so this will somehow like do that if I'm taking the current current pizza I will be taking the current pizza add the value and call this function again from i plus two if I'm not taking the current pizza n will not be like hampered out as well as I will call this function again from i plus one and this is the dpi and i n value so this is the overall logic it's a very small and crisp uh, solution for this problem if you still have any errors you can mention down thank you for watching this video till now i'll see you in the next one till i keep coding and bye